Hello and welcome to the beginning of my four-part rope tutorial series for Unity using the hinge joint system. Throughout the series I'm going to show you how to make two types of hinge joint ropes, a basic rope and a dynamic rope, and then I'm going to take the dynamic rope and expand on that to show you how you can dynamically lengthen and shorten it. I'm also going to show you some functionality you can add to your character controller so that your character can grab the rope, climb the rope, and detach from the rope. And this is all functionality from my most recent game, Jam Game, which you can see the entire devlog for here. The tutorials for the rope lengthening and player interaction will come next week, but if they're already out by the time you're watching this, then the links will be in the description. This video is the tutorial for the dynamic rope. If you want the basic rope, you can click the card above and there's links to everything in the description as well. I also want to say that the basis for this rope was taken from the Brackies Cut the Rope tutorial video and then I expanded on it further. That video is also in the description below. If you're wondering what the differences are between the two ropes, the basic rope is prettier but it's a fixed length and it's prone to breaking more when it interacted with, so you can get colliders working on it quite nicely, you just have to be very careful with the weights of all the bones in the rope. The basic rope also needs no code to make, this is just using Unity's built-in hinge joint system and a custom animation package. The dynamic rope looks a little uglier because sometimes you can see the separation between the rope segments, but this is a lot more functional if you want to use it as an actual mechanic in your game. So keep that in mind when choosing which tutorial you want to follow. Okay, here's the second part of the rope tutorial, making a dynamic length rope. I'm going to use the same sprite as before, but this time I'm going to make the sprite mode multiple. This rope is going to be made by chaining together a bunch of separate little rope chunks. I have a sprite that I'm going to segment into sections and use all of these sections and randomly choose between each section to auto-generate a rope that will look kind of random. You don't have to do it this way, you can just get one rope segment and repeat it over and over again. You can have as many differently looking rope segments as you wish. So I'm just going to do it this way, but you can supplement any amount or any sprites you wish. I'm going to manually segment this rope into different chunks, and I'm going to make sure that they're all seamless so that they'll all be able to attach to each other at the exact same point. I'll show you how I do that. Basically, I can just drag and make sure that I don't catch any of the leaves in between the sprites. I make the sprite the whole width of the image because that means everything will be centered the same way. And then I just change, this is an important step, to make the pivot the top center. So even if you're using just one image of a sprite, you make sure the pivot is the top center. I'm just going to go through now and slice this up. Okay, now that's done, I'm going to click Apply. So now this is broken up into all these different sprites that I can use for different rope segments. Another way to do this is if you don't have any art, you can just generate a square, right click, create, sprites, square, open the square up in the sprite editor and put the pivot point to be top center and then click Apply. Then you can pull the square into your scene and adjust the size however you wish and make this your rope segment. Maybe change the color, whatever you want to do. So if you don't have art ready yet, but you still want to follow along this tutorial, that's a good way to do it. Also make sure this button at the top for the pivot is at pivot, not center. Okay, and that'll make sure we keep that pivot point to the top. So now we're going to make our rope segment object. So I'm going to drag in one of these rope segments. All of the rope segments have the same requirements. We're going to put on a hinge joint 2D, which automatically adds a rigid body 2D. I'm going to uncheck auto configure connect. And I'm going to add also a box collider 2D. I'm going to make that box collider fit the width of my rope. And I'm going to add a script called rope segment. Now I've already created the script, 
but for you just create a new script and we'll go through it together. I'm going to save this as a prefab, so I'm going to drag it into my assets. I'm going to take this prefab and change the sprite for each one, adjust the box collider and save it as a new prefab for each of my different rope segments. Okay, now I have all of my prefabs here. I can delete this from the scene. Now we're gonna go into the script. So in this script, we are just using it to keep track of what is connected above the current rope segment and what is connected below. The main functionality of this script is to determine the length of the rope segment above it so that the anchor of the rope segment can be connected at the right point so there's no overlap. Because all of my rope segments are different lengths, so this will automatically make sure that each one is positioned at the right spot. So I have a game object to represent the connected above and connected below, and this is how we keep track of those objects. The first thing I do is it's easy to find what rope segment is going to be connected above it because that will be in the hinge joint 2D component. So all we gotta do is get the hinge joint 2D component of the rope section that we're in, find the connected body, which is the rigid body of the component above it, and then grab the game object from that, and we set it. Since the connected above rope segment is also going to have the same class of a rope segment, we can grab that. So if there is a rope segment above it, then we set the one above it's connected below object to us. So this rope segment we know now is below the one above us. So we basically, as this rope segment, we tell the one above us that we are below it. So that's how the connected below is set. Then we get the sprite bottom of the sprite above it. So this just takes the sprite renderer of what's connected above it and gets the bounds size Y, which is the vertical length of the sprite. Since we set the pivot point to the top center of the sprite, this will, get, this will tell us exactly where to put our pivot point at the bottom of the sprite above us. So all we got to do is set the connected anchor of our hinge joint component to zero in the x direction because we don't want it to slide left or right, and then the negative value of the sprite bottom. So sprite bottom times negative one. That'll set the connected anchor automatically for every rope to be the very bottom of the one above it. Otherwise, if what's connected above us is null, which means there isn't a rope segment above us, it means that this rope segment that we're in is the top and it is connected to some kind of hook. So all we gotta do is set the connected anchor to zero, zero because we want it to be connected directly onto the hook. One more thing going back in here. All of these rope segment prefabs, make sure auto configure connection is unchecked. This will make sure that we can set it using the script and it's not gonna be overridden by some kind of auto connection. We also need to make sure that all of our rope segment prefabs have the position 0, 0, 0. And I like to set the box collider 2D as a trigger. One last thing to do for all of your rope segments is to make sure the connected anchor here is 0, 0. That way when it starts, it will just drop nicely down from where the rope is. Okay, so the rope segments are done. Next thing we have to do is make the hook and the rope generation script. So first I'm gonna create an empty object called rope2. And then inside that, we're gonna create an empty object called hook. The hook, we're going to add a hinge joint 2D, which automatically adds the rigid body 2D. And this we can leave as default. Inside rope two, we're gonna add a component and we're gonna create a script called rope. I already have the script created, but you can create a new script and I'll walk through it with you. So this script is from that Brackies video that I mentioned. 
The link is in the description if you want more details on how they made it. So first we have a reference to the hook, and then we have an array of all the different prefab rope segments that we just created. So this is the array of rope segments that it's going to choose from to automatically generate our rope. And this is the number of links that we want to have in the rope. You can set this to however many links you want. So all we're going to do is when it starts, call the generate rope function. And in the generate rope function, we're going to go through the number of links that we've set and instantiate a new random rope segment. So we have this variable called prev bod, which is the previous rigid body. And we're going to set that to start as the hook. That's the first rigid body that we want to attach the rope to. So going through a for loop for the number of links, we're going to get a random range between zero and the length of our array of prefabs. So this will choose a random prefab from our array. And then we're going to instantiate it as a new segment. We're going to set the transform of that new segment parent to this object, the rope. This will make sure that all of our new segments are nested nicely under this rope object. And then we're going to just set the position of that new segment to the position of this rope to start. It will move after it's generated. Then all we need to do is set the connected body of the hinge joint of the new segment to whatever the previous body would be. So first we get the hinge joint 2D of that new segment and then we just set connected body to prevbot. So for the first one, it's going to connect to prevbot, which is the hook. So the first rope segment it generates, we're gonna to connect to the hook. Then we set prevbot to be this new segment's rigid body, so that when we go through the link again, when it generates a new segment, it will connect to the segment rigid body before it. And it's that simple. So back in here, all we have to do is drag the hook into our hook spot of the rope script. I have six prefab rope segments that I created that I can now drag in. And there's the rope. So if I wish to move it around, I can again grab the hook and move it around. So to stop it from wiggling and spinning, we can adjust the limits of the angles of all the hinge joints of the rope segments. So let's do that. I'm going to select all of the prefabs. I'm going to go into hinge joint 2D and select use limits and set them to 60, negative 60. Also going to increase the mass to two and give it a go. I'm also going to increase the length of the rope to eight, just to see how that looks. And there's the rope again. And you can see we have a much better rope with those angles. So for collisions with other objects, I've just placed this square into the scene and it has a box collider and a rigid body with a frozen position and rotation. This is the caveat with this rope. When you generate it, it has to be set as trigger, otherwise they will all collide with each other on generation and get tangled up. So if I select all the segments and then turn off the trigger, it's okay and they kind of collide with each other a little bit, but you can then get collisions like this with objects. So what you can do if you want to have collisions from the get-go is you can create a rope yourself without using the generate rope tool and just manually add in all of your different rope segments like this and connect them to each other. I've set in rope the number of links to zero, so it shouldn't generate. And then I can turn all of these trigger off, and they should snap to each other. There we go. So if you want, you can create a rope beforehand like this, and then have the colliders be on. Or you can automatically generate the rope, 
and turn on the colliders after the fact. Um, different ways you can do it. This is the rope I ended up using in my game because I can dynamically adjust the length of the rope. So I'm going to show you that in my next tutorial, how I add and remove links to the rope, as well as how I get a player to jump and connect with the rope and climb up and down. In the meantime, I'm also working on a third type of rope using the line renderer. If you're interested in making this kind of rope, I followed a tutorial which I've linked in the description below. I'm still trying to figure out how to get collisions working with this rope so that the rope could do something like wrap around the box. But so far I am not successful yet, so if I get that working, I will definitely put a tutorial up for that. Thanks for watching this tutorial, I hope it helped you. Leave a comment below if you have any other ideas of how this rope can be expanded further. Until then, if you like more game dev content about art and programming and game dev and design and marketing and all nice things game dev, then you can subscribe to my channel and I keep releasing videos every Sunday, so I hope to see you next week. Bye!